Hey guys, anybody who's been following my channel for a while should know that since 2017 I've been doing a yearly series of Superman reviews to coincide with my yearly series of Batman reviews that I've been doing at the beginning of every year since 2013. Now, what normally I try to do the Superman and Batman reviews in January of every year, but this year it ended up in February, but whatever. It is what it is. So, I'm kicking off 2021 series of Superman reviews with a review of Superman, a celebration of 75 years. Now, this was published in 2013, which at the time was the 75th anniversary of the character of Superman, who was originally created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, and first appeared in Action Comics issue number one in 1938. Now, this is a collection of various different Superman stories from the early Superman comics from the 30s and 40s all the way up until the New 52 era. Now, collections like this have always interested me because they show you both the history and evolution of certain characters, and that's always interested me, especially with characters as famous and iconic as Superman. But because this collects different Superman comics from different time periods, you don't just see the evolution of this character in comics, but you also get to see the evolution of comics in general with collections like this, where you really get to see how comic books have changed and matured and evolved over the decades. Now, in this video, I'm not going to be reviewing each individual story in this collection. Rather, I'm just going to be going over what some of my favorite favorites and least favorites are. So, my first favorite in here, and even if this wasn't one of my favorites, I would feel compelled to talk about this anyway, and that is the first Superman story ever written, which was a two-part story published in Action Comics issues number one and two in 1938, and the story was written by Jerry Siegel and illustrated by Joe Shuster. This was just a fascinating story to read, because I love seeing the roots of long-running characters like this. I love seeing where it all began. And even people who haven't read these early Superman comics seem to know that at this point, Superman couldn't fly yet. Instead, he could leap long distances, like he could leap over buildings, but for some reason, they haven't come up with the concept of Superman flying yet. And even though the story is kind of goofy by today's standards, it does take itself relatively seriously. Like, in this story, you don't have Superman going up against some big bombastic threat like an alien invasion or other superhumans or mummies or robots or anything. In this story, you actually see Superman going up against corruption and injustice. Like, you see him having to prove that a woman who's about to be executed for murder is innocent. You see him going up against corrupt politicians who are trying to push a bill through that's gonna hurt a lot of people. You you see him going up against a corrupt businessman who is making money off of war. You also see him going up against gangsters who kidnapped Lois. My next favorite story in the collection, which is actually the second story featured in the collection, is How Superman Would Win the War. And I mainly like this for its historical significance. This was published in Look Magazine in 1940, and it's once again written by Jerry Siegel and illustrated by Joe Schuster. This is literally a two-page long comic strip, and all you need to know about it is in it Superman kicks Hitler and Stalin's asses. I mean, it's pure propaganda, but given that Hitler and Stalin were evil men, you could argue that it's good propaganda. It's ironic that even though the war was going on when this comic strip was written, this was a little over a year before the U.S. would actually enter the war. It's also ironic that even though Stalin's one of the villains of this comic strip, Russia would end up becoming sort of our uneasy ally during the Second World War. But again, I mainly liked this for its historical significance. Like, if you're at all interested in World War II and the kind of propaganda that existed during World War II, I would recommend checking this story out. My next favorite story, which is actually the fourth story contained in the collection, is The Origin of Superman, which first appeared in Superman issue 53 in 1948, and this was written by Bill Finger and illustrated by 
Wayne Boren. He has kind of a funny last name, but I know he went under the pseudonym Jack Harmon. But this was the first Superman comic to really explore Superman's origins. Now, his origins were touched upon earlier, even in the first Superman story, but this was the first one that really sort of established the Superman origin that we know. Now, Superman's origins have been retconned a lot in the years since this, but for the most part, it's remained the same to what's presented in this comic. Now, I do want to point out that Bill Finger, who wrote this, is also the co-creator creator of Batman. My next favorite story in here is the death of Superman, but this is not the death of Superman that you might be thinking of. Of course, everybody knows about the Superman story arc from the 90s, the death of Superman, but this one is actually a three-issue story arc from 1961, written by Jerry Siegel and illustrated by Kurt Swand. Now, this is what's known as an imaginary story, which basically means it's set outside of continuity. Essentially, it's what would later be known as an Elseworlds story. Basically, in this story, Lex Luthor pretends to be going straight, and he actually finds a cure for cancer, which gets everybody to think that he's a hero, and him and Superman actually become friends for a brief period, but you realize that this is all a ruse to gain Superman's trust so he could eventually kill him. But this was actually a really good story. I mean, it is a little goofy because comics during this time were notoriously goofy because this was the era of the comics code where comic book writers and artists were kind of strong-armed into making everything kid-friendly. Now, there are some stupid things in this story. Like, in the story, Lex Luthor gains Superman's trust a little too easily, but I understand that it was written for kids. But again, the story is actually really good, and it gets surprisingly dark for a comic around this time. My next favorite story from this collection was The Legend of Earth Prime, which was published in Superman issue 400 in 1984, which was called The Living Legends of Superman. Superman. This story was written by Elias S. Magjin and illustrated by Frank Miller. Basically, this story appears to be set years and years in the future, and you follow this journalist named Lois Olsen, who appears to be part cyborg, and she's interviewing these guys who claim to have uncovered the secret identity of Superman. But in the story, they start viewing this show from an alternate universe where Superman is just a fictional character, and the show they start viewing is the George Reeves Superman series. So basically, the story is kind of like a metafiction love letter to Superman. But it is a really cool story, especially if you're into metafiction stuff. My next favorite story in here, which I also think is probably the best story in the collection, because this is probably one of the greatest Superman comics ever written, and that's For the Man Who Has Everything, which was written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Dave Gibbons, both of whom would go on to create the groundbreaking graphic novel Watchmen. I'm not going to spend too much time on this story because I already did a standalone review of it back in 2019. Basically, in this story, it's Superman's birthday, so Batman and Robin and Wonder Woman go to the Fortress of Solitude to celebrate with him, but when they get there, they find that Superman has this alien parasite attached to him, putting him in sort of a dream state. And basically, this dream that Superman is having is what if Krypton never blew up and Kal-El was able to live out a long and happy life on Krypton, but you also see the negative consequences of this. And as is typical with a lot of Alan Moore's stuff, it's actually a very deep and philosophical story. But again, if you want to know more of my opinions on this story, just check out the review I did on this two years ago. My next favorite story in here was The Name Game, which was written by John Byrne and illustrated by Carl Kessel, and this was published in 1987. But this story features the character of... I'm going to have a hell of a time pronouncing this character's name, and I understand that the point of this character is his name is supposed to be hard to pronounce, but I think it's pronounced Mix Yes Spetlick, 
or Mixie S. Spitlick. He's the imp from the fifth dimension, but I believe that this is the first time that this character showed up in the post-crisis continuity. Basically, all you need to know about this story is Mixie S. Spitlick comes to Metropolis and starts fucking things up because he can control reality, so he turns Lois Lane into a mannequin, and it's about Superman trying to figure out how to stop him, but this story was absolutely hilarious. My next favorite story in here, and this might actually be, in my opinion, the second best story contained in this collection, and it's What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way, which was published in Action Comics issue 775 in 2001, and this was written by Joe Kelly and illustrated by Doug Menke. Uh, keep in mind, I suck at pronouncing some last names, and Lee Bermejo. But basically, this is about Superman going up against a vigilante group who call themselves the Elite, who outright kill the criminals that they fight. Basically, they're extremists who believe that the only way to deal with evil is to completely eradicate it. And really, the story is about a battle of ideologies between the optimism of Superman versus the nihilism of the Elite's leader, Manchester Black. And basically, the idea you kind of get from this story is, is the the world becoming a darker place, and does the world really have a place for Superman anymore, or is the elite sort of the new class of hero that the world needs? And basically the story is about Superman having to prove that his way still works. But you also see him start to stoop to the elite's level to a certain extent. But this was a really good story, and at some point I might try to do a standalone review of this. Now, this comic was adapted into the 2012 animated film Superman vs. the Elite, and it was also adapted into an episode of Supergirl. Now, the last story in this collection that I want to talk about in terms of my favorites is The Incident, which was published in Action Comics 900 in 2011, and this story was actually written by David S. Goyer, who also wrote movies like Demotic Toys and Blade and and he co-wrote Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, and he wrote Man of Steel. And this story was also illustrated by Miguel... I'm not going to be able to pronounce his last name, so I'm just going to have it come up as text on the video. But this was a really good and very political story. Basically, in the story, Superman shows up at a major protest happening in Iran, and this kicks off a major international incident where the Iranian government thinks that the president sent Superman to act on America's behalf. And basically, the American government confronts Superman, and they're like, what the fuck were you thinking? But basically, even though this is a superhero story, it's a story that touches on real-world issues, and the whole point of the story is Superman has gone up against all these bombastic threats, but the one thing that he's helpless to stop is oppressive governments taking away their people's basic human rights. And it's a pretty powerful story, honestly. Now, my my least favorite story in this collection, and it's only one least favorite that I have, but my least favorite is The Mightiest Team-Up in the World, which was published in Superman 76 in 1952, and this was written by Edmund Hamilton and illustrated by Kurt Swan. And this is a crossover between Superman and Batman, and I think this might have been the first Superman and Batman crossover in comics, but it's just a lame story to be be honest, and it's a little too goofy, even for my taste. Now, the other stories contained in this collection that I didn't talk about are good, but again, I didn't want to review each individual story in this collection. But if you get this collection, definitely check out the stories I named as my favorites, especially for The Man Who Has Everything and What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and The American Way. I do want to point out that this collection contains the issue Doomsday, which is part of the Death of Superman story arc, but, and that issue is good, but if you're going to read that, you should really read that in the Death of Superman collections as opposed to in this collection. But again, I do recommend this collection if you're a Superman fan, but that was my review on Superman, a celebration of 75 years, and bye.